Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for the College of Education and Human Development's Faculty Awards recognition. This annual event is an opportunity to recognize and say thank you to colleagues who this year exemplify the best in various aspects of our profession. Today, we are recognizing excellence in three areas, teaching, service to the profession and community, and research and scholarship. It is through these that we prepare the next generation of professionals, join with local partners to better our communities, and generate and apply the knowledge of our disciplines. These individuals have published extensively, mentored numerous educators and peers, secured significant grant funding, and represented Georgia State University in the College of Education and Human Development in school systems, community organizations, and in their disciplines. We look forward to sharing more about them during today's program. I would like to introduce Dr. Katharina Chang, Professor and Director of the CEHD International Programs, who will present our first award. The Innovation and International Education Faculty Award recognizes a full-time faculty member in the College of Education and Human Development for their outstanding achievement in international education. Criteria for selection include evidence of impact on global engagement, including study abroad, research, grants, and partnerships. This year, it is my distinct privilege to present this award to a faculty member who has dedicated over 15 years of promoting international education through her professional service and leadership scholarship and international partnerships. Her passion and commitment for developing global citizens is evidenced across her teaching, service, and research. This faculty established a partnership with Sichuan Normal University in China. This partnership has resulted in numerous study abroad programs to China, hosting international students and scholars, co-authorship and co-presentation of research studies and pedagogical pieces, both with U.S. and Chinese colleagues. Student teachers who participated in this faculty study abroad programs reported that both their professional and personal lives were better because of their immersion experience in China. This faculty also served as president of the International Assembly at the National Council for the, for the Social Studies and a member of the National Council for the Social Studies International Task Force. At Georgia State, she serves as a member of the GSU Faculty Teaching and Learning Community on Virtual Exchanges, and she has also served on the China Task Force. Because of her dedication to promoting international education, it is my honor to present the CEHD Innovation and in International Education Faculty Award to Dr. Yali Zhao. Thank you, Dean Alberto. Thank you, Dr. Chan, for your kind words. Thanks to everyone who is attending this virtual faculty award ceremony. I'm very honored to receive the Innovation in International Education Faculty Award. I'm grateful for the recognition of my work at GSU for the past 16 years. I want to express my sincere thanks to my department, our college, and all the colleagues who recognize my work, nominate me, and give me this award. As an immigrant faculty and instructor of social studies and multicultural education, I know how important it is to be open-minded and to be respectful of different cultures and communicate with people in other countries in this increasingly diverse, culturally diverse, and globally connected world. This is why in the past 16 years, I have been promoting international education through my research, teaching, and service. So I have been working very hard with colleagues to help our students develop uh, cross-culture and global competency through study abroad programs, international education exchange programs and virtual exchange programs with different countries, not just China. So all this work takes a huge amount of time and effort, but I feel rewarded whenever my students tell me how they are grateful for the opportunities to learn about different educational systems and cultures and how they have grown personally and professionally because of their international learning experiences. I'm very glad that I've been able to use my experience and skills to mentor GSU faculty on international virtue exchange activities in the past two years, especially during this period of time of the global pandemic, so that our students 
could continue to communicate and collaborate with international partners to learn from each other. Winning this award would not have been possible without the great support I have received from, from my colleagues. In particular, I want to thank Dr. Laura Myers, who nominated me and who has been my best partner in international education in the past 16 years. And my previous department chairs, Dr. Doctors Barbara Myers and Lynn Hart, and also my current chair, Dr. Laura May, and of course, Dr. Dean Alberto and Dr. Chang for giving me all the support. Finally, I want to thank my family, my husband, who has been generously and selflessly supporting my international work all these years. I sincerely thank all my colleagues and all the students who helped me earn this award as a mark of my achievement in international education. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Dr. Zhao. I would like to introduce Dr. Joyce Manning, Senior Associate Dean of the Undergraduate Studies and Educator Preparation to present our Faculty Awards for Teaching Excellence. It is my pleasure to present the Outstanding Faculty Teaching Award for Graduate Teaching. This award recognizes a full-time faculty member in the college for outstanding achievement in the area of teaching at the graduate level. This year's award is presented to Dr. Deborah Schober peterson Clinical Professor of Communication Sciences and Disorders and Director of Clinical Education. Dr. Schober peterson has dedicated her 30-year career to developing and teaching in the College of Education and Human Development Speech-Language Pathology Program. She has drawn on innovative techniques to ensure students acquire knowledge of evidence-based research and develop expertise garnered from real-life experiences. According to her chair's nomination letter, she successfully conveys the complex and detailed knowledge of communication sciences and disorders in a way that permits our students to demonstrate outstanding clinical skills. She has excelled at fostering students to apply their classroom knowledge to their on-campus practicum experiences in our speech language hearing clinic and during their internships in schools and medical settings. Dr. Sherbert Peterson's ability to be innovative was put to a test in 2020. When graduating students were faced with a loss of clinical experiences due to the pandemic closing the clinic and medical settings. Working swiftly, she moved all clinical services from in-person to teletherapy, an approach which had never been utilized in the 45-year history of the clinic at Georgia State University. According to her nomination letter, Dr. Schober peterson skills with developing a plan, communicating with students, supervisors, and clients, and getting everyone started with teletherapy was a remarkable accomplishment in and of itself. But she did this in two weeks, spring break and the week after. Students were able to continue to learn because of her quick and innovative problem solving. She was also instrumental in establishing patient simulation for our students so they could continue to learn about various communication disorders and move toward graduation. Because of her innovations with teletherapy and patient simulations, our master's students successfully obtained the knowledge and skills necessary to complete our program, despite the roadblocks created by the pandemic. Her efforts to give 110% to find ways to meet students' needs did not go unnoticed by her students. Indeed, one student commented, she demonstrated long suffering and perseverance as our medical internships experienced such turmoil as a result of COVID-19. She was a creative problem solver. She is seen by students as well organized, prepared, and effective with time, and overall, a great teacher. I am happy to present this year's College of Education and Human Development's Outstanding Faculty Teaching Award for Graduate Teaching to Dr. Deborah Schober peterson Good afternoon. I'm excited to be here today. It's an immense honor to receive the College of Education and Human Development Outstanding Faculty Teaching Award for Graduate Teaching this year. To be honest, it took me by surprise because I know I'm surrounded by amazing teachers throughout all of the departments in our college. 
As you know, I'm a faculty member in the Department of Communication Disorders. Through our work, we educate students to be licensed and nationally certified speech language pathologists. I've been in academia for many years, and I have a very strong passion for both academic and clinical education. Simply put, I love teaching. Every year with a new group of graduate students, it is challenging, rewarding, and fun to see them grow into beginning professionals in the field of speech language pathology. I enjoy the opportunity to work with such bright and motivated students who have, had, who have such a strong dedication to improving the communication and swallowing skills of the people they serve. One of my roles in the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders is to oversee the clinical education of all of our students, both in the speech language hearing clinic on the eighth floor of our building, as well as in their off-campus internships. The pandemic impacted our students greatly and pivoting to virtual therapy services was an unprecedented experience for all of us. Now, a year later, we have successfully supported our students in developing the knowledge and the skills they need to provide quality services to their clients. It's been a whirlwind of a year. So receiving this award is very meaningful to me. I am proud to be a member of the Georgia State and CEHD community. In addition, I am especially appreciative of the hard work and dedication of all of the members of the CSD community. Thank you for honoring me with this award today. Congratulations. It is my pleasure to present the Outstanding Faculty Teaching Award for Undergraduate Teaching to Dr. Darren Boyles, Professor of Social Foundations in the Department of Educational Policy Studies. Dr. Boyles teaches EDUC 2110 using an approach where he provides content to a large lecture section, which meets once a week with 90 students, followed by three breakout sessions led by his teaching assistants. The course focuses on the social foundations of education and the history of states. He designs and plans the content of the lectures and breakouts and works diligently to mentor his teaching assistants. As his chair noted in his nomination letter, Dr. Boyle spends hours each week meeting with the TAs and addressing issues to help them become stronger teachers themselves. His undergraduates describe him as passionate, serious and honest, and is asking thought-provoking questions and having high expectations. The value of Dr. Boyle's work as an educator was also eloquently described by one of his graduate teaching assistants who wrote, Dr. Boyle's exemplifies the qualities of a lifelong educator who embodies the principles of teaching. He inspires his undergraduate students to reach beyond their own expectations and strive to become lifelong educators themselves. Interestingly, the challenges presented by the pandemic and the need to embrace technology and virtual instruction did not change Dr. Boyle's passion nor alter his approach. His nomination letter further explains, his philosophy is that education should be, as democratic, should be a democratic process in which teachers and students engaged in the process of inquiry together. Together, the teachers and students read, communicate, interrogate, and deliberate ideas. Being relegated to our own homes and having to meet with approximately seven students, 70 students on Zoom every week has presented many challenges. Dr. Boyles could have lost sight of his goals at any point during this time, but I believe the challenges have given a new life and new strength to his philosophy. He maintains the same high expectations of his students that he has of them when they are right in the room with him. He expects them to prove that they are ready to embody the life of an educator. It is with pleasure that I present the College of Education and Human Development Outstanding Faculty Teaching Award for Undergraduate Teaching to Dr. Darren Boyle. Thanks very much. Uh, I want to begin my brief remarks by thanking Aaron Scussell and Dr. Jennifer Esposito for initiating and supporting my nomination. It may not seem like it, but writing letters of support for things like tenure and promotion, external reviews, and 
nominating letters for awards like this one. It takes a lot of time and attention to detail. So sincere thanks to Aaron and to Dr. Esposito, who is the chair of the Department of Educational Policy Studies. I'm deeply honored by this recognition, particularly because it spotlights the importance of undergraduate teaching in our college. I think it's also important to note that the undergraduate course that I teach, Critical and Contemporary Issues in Education, is part of the Area F curriculum for future teachers. It's a required course, in other words, and required courses are notoriously tricky to teach well. The central goal of the course is not to train future teachers, but to educate them. The point is to challenge and provoke students to think deeply about a variety of issues, ethics in the law, gender, history, economics, diverse student populations, testing, curriculum, politics, and yes, this includes social justice. The course is also anchored in philosophy. Why we teach is as important as what and how we teach. This effort is also not a solo affair, however. I work with and mentor three PhD students as teaching assistants in this course, and for the past 20-something years, I've been honored to work with some of the best PhD students imaginable. This year, the TAs are Aaron Scussell, Christy Cameron, and Kenneth Driggers. So in accepting this award, I do so jointly with Aaron, Christy, and Kenneth, and in recognition of the many PhD students who have been so central to excellent teaching in this course over the years. Thank you. Congratulations. Now I would like to present the award for the Outstanding Faculty Service to the Community. The Outstanding Faculty Service to the Community Award recognizes a full-time faculty member who fulfills in an exemplary way the college's commitment to service and has consistently demonstrated exemplary service to the community and the campus. This award is determined based on evidence of sustained involvement and leadership in working with the public, campus, and or external organizations. Also by evidence of the impact on a target audience and the impact of service on scholarship, instruction, and curriculum. The faculty member who has been selected to receive this recognition is Dr. Stacy Wallen. Dr. Wallen is a clinical associate professor and the dir director of satellite clinical programs in the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders, where she has worked as a faculty member for 13 years. The evidence of Dr. Wallen's exemplary service to the community is abundant and overwhelming. From serving as a member of the Atlanta Children's Shelter Board to organizing and implementing parent education programs through the Lena Start Initiative, Dr. Wallen's presence in the community is clear, persistent, and powerful. The evidence of Dr. Wallen's service can be seen in its efforts within settings across numerous communities in the metro Atlanta area. A few examples of her exemplary service include the partnerships that she has nurtured with the Atlanta Children's Shelter, where speech language service delivery is now occurring for toddlers, preschool, and kindergarten children at the shelter. At Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, Hugh Spaulding Sickle Cell Program, Dr. Wallen organizes the CHOA Project Read Initiative that helps patients and their families with assessment and services. A final example is the Clarkston Communication Collective, which represents the Communication Sciences and Disorders Department's first satellite clinic. Dr. Wallen spearheaded the establishment of this clinic, oversaw the creation of the physical space, and directs the clinic to ensure that members of the Clarkston community have access to speech and language services, even through virtual programming during the pandemic. Frankly, the impact of Dr. Wallen's service to the community is truly immeasurable, because of Dr. Wallen's vision, commitment, and what her colleagues describe as tireless and strong conviction, lives and communities will forever be changed. Over the last 13 years, she has been a leader in ensuring that services are now being provided for children and families who may not have otherwise received them and their lives will be changed. She is creating spaces for the future generations of speech language pathologists and service providers to develop and refine their skills in ways that are culturally responsive their future practice will be changed. She has led efforts to ensure that community-based services are available and accessible. Those communities will be changed. Sustained, impactful, and transformative. This is the work of Dr. Stacy Wallen. It is my pleasure to present her as the 2021 recipient of the Outstanding Faculty Service to the Community Award. I'd like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the College of Education and Human Development and to those who nominated me to receive this award. 
I'd also like to thank all of the community organizations that have partnered with us over the years, um, the students who come into these community-based experiences eager to learn and to make a difference, and of course, um, my home department of communication sciences and disorders who are always supporting all of these community-based efforts. Um, I've always felt that the university has an important role to play in meeting the needs of its students, as well as the community at large. And when I think of the mission of Georgia State University and this college, service is at its core. So many of us come into our field um, wanting to make a positive difference in our communities. And in order to do this um, and fulfill this mission of making positive change and moving lives forward in the community, we must understand the wants and needs of the community. And this can't be done by simply being in the community and observing as an outsider, but rather it requires that one must be of the community and actively engaging and participating in activities that are important to that community. For me, by providing these early um, opportunities for students to engage with the community, it allows us to lead by example, and it helps students see service as part of their personal and professional mission. It is my hope that we continue to use community-based experiences to move lives forward. Thank you again for this award. Congratulations. The Outstanding Faculty Service to the Profession Award recognizes a full-time faculty member who fulfills in an exemplary way the college's commitment to service and has consistently demonstrated exemplary service to their profession at a national level. The faculty member who has been selected to receive this recognition is Dr. Thomas Crisp. Dr. Crisp is an associate professor in the Department of Early Childhood and Elementary Education, where he has worked as a faculty member for eight years. Dr. Crisp's exemplary service to the profession is evident in a variety of meaningful and laudable ways with a scope that spans from local to international organizations. The evidence of Dr. Crisp's service to the profession is extensive and certainly goes beyond the expectations of this award. He is currently serving as the elected president of the Children's Literature Association. CHLA is an international nonprofit organization devoted to research and scholarship about children's literature. In this position, his duties are considerable, including acting as chief executive officer and making executive decisions on behalf of the organization. Prior to his tenure as the CHLA president, Dr. Crisp has served the organization in a variety of other capacities, including the Conference Advisory Committee, Conference Planning Committee, Diversity Committee, serving as a faculty mentor for graduate students and junior faculty members, and chairing conference sessions. Another prominent area of national service in which Dr. Crisp has made significant contributions includes his work with the Children's Literature Assembly. His leadership in this role includes serving multiple three-year terms as an elected member of their board of directors. He also serves as co-editor of the Journal of Children's Literature, where he recently co-led the development of a new mission for the journal, one that he says unequivocally foregrounds their commitment to the recognition of diverse voices and support of emerging indigenous, black, and people of color scholars and researcher, researchers. Dr. Crisp's efforts have a clear and impactful reach here in the city of Atlanta and throughout the state of Georgia. The local community has certainly benefited from the valuable service he has offered to libraries, artists, workshops, and schools. For example, Dr. Crisp has led the way in developing resources for teachers that would supplement the exhibitions featured at beloved venues like the High Museum of Art. Dr. Work, Dr. Crisp's work helps increase the accessibility to the educational benefits of these rich experiences. In addition to the professional service that he has diligently and faithfully provided to international, national, state, and local organizations, Dr. Crisp generously serves the GSU and CEHD community as well. His contributions include serving as a founding member of PRISM, the GSU LGBT. TQ Plus Faculty Affiliate Group, the College Committee on Diversity, and the Committee for Research and Scholarship. 
In his own words, Dr. Crisp has this to say about his work. My, prominent, my commitment to the field of children's literature is grounded in my belief in the power of children's books to help shape and influence the ways in which young people, as well as adults, view and understand themselves, the people they love, and the world in which they live. Because children's books can serve as a catalyst for social action and change, I believe it is vital that I do as much as I can to support and advance this field of study. The extensive work and professional service that is evident in this nomination clearly reflects this commitment to his field and the profession. It is my pleasure to present the College of Education and Human Development Outstanding Service to the Profession Award to Dr. Thomas Crisp. I want to say thank you to my department chair, Dr. Laura May, and our dean, Dr. Paul Alberto, for their continued support of all my work, including my professional service. They both always made me feel like the work I do is meaningful and valued, and I really appreciate that. I also want to say thank you to my spouse, Mateus, and acknowledge publicly that he does much more than what is fair when it comes to maintaining our home and our day-to-day -day lives. He makes it possible for me to give so much time and energy to this work. So uh, thank you, Laura, Paul, and Mateus. Thank you, Dr. Wallen and Dr. Crisp. I would like to introduce Dr. Chris Vargas, Associate Dean for Graduate Studies and Research, who will present our faculty awards for research. Recognizes a full-time faculty member in the College of Education and Human Development for outstanding achievement in the area of scholarship. The faculty member who has been selected to receive the 2021 Outstanding Faculty Research Award is Dr. Tim Kellison. Dr. Kellison is an associate professor in the Department of Kinesiology and Health, where he has worked since 2016. Dr. Kellison is internationally recognized as a leading scholar on sport and ecology. Dr. Kellison has published over 50 peer-reviewed articles in top-tiered international sports management journals, nine book chapters, and two edited books. He has presented over 60 referee talks across North America, Africa, Asia, Australia, and Europe. He was named a Fulbright Specialist in Urban Planning for the project entitled Research on the Hatfield Campus at the University of Pretoria, South Africa. His collaborative work that was conducted during his Fulbright earned the 2018 gold winner at the Gauteng Premier's Service Excellent Awards. In 2020, Dr. Kellison was named a North American Society for Sports Management Research Fellow, which is the field's most prestigious research honor. He has received numerous best paper awards signifying the high impact of his work, including the 2020 European Association for Sports Management for his study on climate vulnerability as a justification for stadium replacement. Dr. Kellison's collaborations are extensive and span many organizations and countries. In 2017, he and his co-authors from Japan and the US received the Journal of Global Sports Management Excellence Award for do snow-based sports participants intend to purchase products from environmentally friendly companies? Dr. Kellison served on an international working group convened by the Secretariat of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in 2018. Through these efforts, he was the co-author for the Sports for Climate Action Framework, an initiative aimed at supporting and guiding sport actors in achieving global climate change goals. Initial signatories include the International Olympic Committee, the International Federation of Association Football, United States Tennis Association, the New York Yankees, and the local organizing committees of the 2020 Tokyo, 2022 Beijing, and 2024 Paris Olympic and Paralympic Games. Dr. Kellison is the director of the Center for Sport and Urban Policy. The Center for Sport and Urban Policy seeks to enhance public understanding of issues related to sports and environmental sustainability by bridging the gap between academic research and the sports industry. The center under Dr. Kellison's leadership was named a 2019 Innovator of the Year by the Green Sports Alliance for providing volunteer recruitment services for the Playoff Green Program at the 2018 College Football Playoff National Championship game. More than 40 students, faculty, and staff served as green ambassadors to promote sustainable behavior during the game. Additionally, CSUP staff served on several advisory boards, including the Super Bowl Sustainability Advisory Committee, 
to leave a positive environmental and social legacy from events associated with the NFL's 2019 Super Bowl at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Dr. Kellison has secured over $1 million in external funding from a wide range of, resource, of, sur of sur sources, including youth organizations, K-12 schools, universities, university athletic conferences, professional sports organizations, and the International Olympic Committee. It is my honor to present the 2021 CEHD Outstanding Faculty Research Award to Dr. Tim Kellison. Thanks, Dr. Vargas, for that kind introduction. And thank you to Dean Alberto and his staff in the Dean's office, not only for this recognition, but also for putting this event together. As we've learned over the past year, organizing a virtual meeting can be even harder than doing it face to face. So thanks very much for this. I also want to acknowledge the awards committee and congratulate the other award recipients and nominees for their inspiring and important contributions. In many ways, this recognition is acknowledgement of just how lucky I, I have been. Uh, that's not to say I haven't worked hard, but instead that this award is to be shared with many, many colleagues and friends. I'm lucky to be at a university and in a college that have been so supportive of my research. I'm lucky to be in a department that is made up of an affable community of scholars. And I'm lucky that department is led by Dr. Jerry Brandon, who takes time at every faculty meeting to recognize our publications and presentations and celebrate all of our tiny victories. I'm lucky to have learned from others in our department uh, who have set high standards for research, including Drs. Fong Yang and Brett Wong. I'm lucky to have fantastic colleagues in the sport administration program, including Tim Newman, Elodie Wenling, and Beth Sanfrone. All are great friends, and I can't wait till we get back together uh, at the Waffle House or Sensational Subs or wherever Elodie wants to go. But Beth in particular has been a selfless mentor, and she's done many things to help me, including protecting my time, often at the sacrifice of her own. So thank you. I'm lucky to have been able to work with such innovative and driven and energizing scholars in our doctoral program. Folks like Kelly Elliott, Armin Marquez, and Glenn McGeehy, all of whom are doctors now and achieving great things out there on their own. And finally, I'm lucky to have the love and support of my family. My darling spouse, Rosemary, teaches me new words every day and is responsible for at least half of the ideas that end up on paper and all of the good ones. The greatest idea we've ever had is our little son, Felix, and I'm lucky he always, always keeps me humble. So thank you again for this recognition. It will always serve as a reminder of just how lucky I am. Now I'd like to present the Outstanding Faculty Research Mentoring Award, who recognizes a full-time faculty member in the College of Education and Human Development, who fulfills in an exemplary way the college's commitment to providing mentoring in the, conduct, in the conduct of research to faculty, colleagues, and doctoral students. The faculty member who has been selected to receive the 2021 Outstanding Faculty Research Mentoring Award is Dr. Andy Roach. When Dr. Roach arrived at Georgia State University, he brought a passion for advocating and supporting individuals with disability. His desire to give voice to and advocate for individuals with disabilities led him to develop a strong collaborative relationship with the Center for Leadership and Disability, a university center for excellence in developmental disabilities education, research, and service, for which he served as associate director for five years. Dr. Roach continues to collaborate on many of the CLD's projects and initiatives. During his involvement with the CLD, he mentored multiple junior faculty, staff members, and graduate students. Dr. Roach has been extremely effective obtaining external funding for his work with 20 external grants that have has resulted in over $15 million that have supported faculty, staff, and students. As a result of his outstanding repu reputation as a researcher, Dr. Roach has had an extensive editorial experiences that have added to the mentorship that he has been able to provide to researchers based on his thoughtful reviews of manuscripts submitted for possible publication. Dr. Roach has served as an associate editor for the journal of School Psychology and an ed editorial board member for the School Psychology Quarterly, Journal of Educational and Psychological Consultation, Mindfulness, Journal of School Psychology, and Assessment for Effective Intervention. Dr. Roach's collaborative efforts uh, and mentorship have resulted in numerous research and practice publications. 
chapters and books, presentations at local and national conferences, and partnerships with schools and communities and organizations throughout Georgia. He has published with students as co-authors on 28 of his 62 peer-reviewed publications. He has delivered 95 professional conference presentations and students have been co-authors on the majority of these presentations. A current doctoral advisee remarked, to say thank you has never been adequate when expressing my profound gratitude for your wisdom, the hours you gave up to edit my writing, your positive energy and your humanity. When I think back on this journey, I know I have made it this far because of your guidance and unconditional support. While this past year has been casted in darkness, your optimism and sense of humor kept us steadfast and resilient through setbacks and challenges in our personal and professional lives. Another mentee stated, Dr. Roach is selflessly committed to supporting his advisees, research interests and pursuits. He strikes a masterful balance of providing just the right amount of support, giving us space to grow, all the while walking beside us, encouraging us in the growing pains. In addition to supporting current students, Dr. Roach has continued to encourage former students with nine of his more recent peer-reviewed articles co-authored with eight separate former students. The current associate director of GSU's CLD was a doctoral student of Dr. Roach's. She credits his support, model leadership, and friendship as a primary reason why she moved into a faculty position and then into an administrative position. Dr. Roach brings kindness, humor, thoughtfulness, and self-reflection to all his mentoring efforts and the CLD. The CLD faculty and staff noted that their projects and teams would not be the same without his guidance and support. Dr. Roach's nominators concluded by stating, Dr. Roach is among the most collaborative professors at the university is, and is one who measures his success by encouraging the success of others. It is my honor to present the 2021 CEHD Outstanding Faculty Research Mentoring Award to Dr. Andy Roach. Thank you, uh, Dr. Vargas. It is an honor to be selected for this year's College of Education and Human Development Outstanding Faculty Research Mentoring Award. And reflecting on this award, I was struck by the irony of recognizing a single individual for exemplary mentoring. When mentoring is, by its very definition, an act of relationship. In other words, I recognize that you can only be an outstanding mentor when you have the opportunity to work with amazing students and colleagues. Because of this, I have a lot of people to thank for making this award possible. First, thank you to my wonderful faculty colleagues in CPS who nominated me for this award. I'm especially grateful to my current and former colleagues in school psychology. Joel Myers, Katherine Perkins, Chris Vargas, Kim Robinson, Ethan Van Norman, Scott Decker, and Steve Trescott, who are not only terrific co-workers, but also some of my very best friends. I am also lucky to work with an amazing team of faculty and staff at the Center for Leadership and Disability. Dan Crimmins, Emily Graybill, Mark Crenshaw, Brian Barger, Aaron Vanosky thomas and many wonderful staff members. Working with you to build a more inclusive and just Georgia is one of the great joys of my career. And of course, I get to work with and learn from amazing, talented graduate students. I'm in all of your ingenuity, energy, and commitment to our shared work. So many of my articles and book chapters have been co-authored with students and alumni. Finally, I am thankful for the support of my family and friends, some of whom are able to be with us today on Zoom. My sister Jenny, who encouraged me to go to graduate school and literally drove me across the country to make sure I showed up on my first day. My husband, Will, who patiently listens to me as I think aloud through various work-related challenges and successes. And finally, my parents, Lois and Dave, who modeled mentoring for me. Growing up, I saw my parents supporting their younger colleagues, talking to them on the phone, inviting them into our home, helping them grow into their professional roles. My parents taught me that how you show up for your colleagues matters 
and that there is value and honor in supporting others' success and achievement. I'm so thankful my mom is able to join us via the web today. Unfortunately, my dad passed away a couple years ago, but I can't help to think he would be as proud of this award as anything I've achieved in my career. Thank you again for selecting me for this year's mentoring award. I am thrilled to be able to share it with a network of amazing support and collaboration. Congratulations again to Dr. Kellison and Dr. Roach. I would now like to invite Dr. Alberto back to close out our program. Congratulations to all of this year's awards recipients. Thank you to our presenters and to everyone who joined us virtually today, especially Andy's mom. We hope you enjoyed learning more about this year's faculty award recipients. Their dedication to their profession is inspiring. It makes us proud and grateful to have them as colleagues. And it makes understandable why the profile across this country of Georgia State University's College of Education is rising in the trajectory that it is. This concludes our program. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Hope to see you around campus soon.